There is so much more to Koh Samui than turquoise waters, white sand beaches, sprinkled with a little bit of Thai culture. Koh Samui is easily one of my favorite Thai islands. And in this video, I wanna share with you the top 10 things that you absolutely have to do when you plan your trip to Koh Samui. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a few different tours and different companies that I went on as well. And if you wanna check those out, I can highly recommend them. I'm gonna link them in the video description below. With that being said, let's get into the top 10 things that you must add to your itinerary in Koh Samui. First off, it's going to be the Big Buddha. Now, the Big Buddha is the Buddha that you'll probably see if you're sat on the left side of the plane when you're arriving into Koh Samui, you'll see the big golden Buddha, which goes up some steps, and it's actually on an island that is connected to Koh Samui. It's a man-made island, and it's just a place that you absolutely need to visit. It's a lovely Buddha, and, you know, again, you get a real sense of, you know, awe when you are there, uh, and you see the locals praying, and it's a beautiful sight, and you should absolutely check it out. Next, it's going to be Wat Plyat Lim. This was probably one of my favorite places, temples-wise, in the whole of Thailand. It definitely felt like it had a lot of, you know, meaning behind it because of the three distinctly different Buddhas. There was a happy Buddha, there was a Chinese Buddha, Guan Yin, who represents the female reincarnation of Buddha. There is a third area as well. And this, these three sections are meant to represent the three different religious populations that are actually present in Koh Samui. Those being the Chinese population, the Buddhist population, and the Muslim population. I absolutely love this temple because especially having a tour guide to explain the significance of them with Mr. Samui, who I can highly recommend, I'll link the tour to that in the video description below, it was amazing. I learned so much about where Buddhism came from, how Buddha was actually born into the Indian royal family and he had two options to follow from a fortune teller to either become the biggest king in the world or the biggest Buddha in the world and he followed the life of Buddhism. So really, really interesting tour. Probably I'd say my favorite temple in Koh Samui. Next on the list, it is Wat Kunaram. And this is the most unique temple that I visited in my entire time in Thailand. And that is because there is a mummified monk, an actual monk who died in 1973 and his remains were mummified. He is in great condition. To be honest, it's a little bit of an eerie experience because you're looking at essentially a dead body, but people still go to this monk and regularly pray because he had a lot of religious significance in the Koh Samui area. For a tourist visiting that, it was an interesting experience. Next up, we've got the Hinta and Hin Yai stones. And this is the most visited site in the whole of Koh Samui. And the reason for that is because one is shaped like a penis and the other is shaped like a vagina. And there's a very interesting story about this. There was basically a boy who was marrying a lady in Hoi Hin. The son's parents was traveling from the south of Thailand over the seas to bring lots of money to support their son. Now, unfortunately, as they were crossing the waters nearby Koh Samui, their ship was hit by a storm and they capsized and unfortunately they both perished. And the story goes that to show the son that the mum and dad was actually coming, they came back as two stones. Interesting sight, beautiful turquoise waters aside from the stones, but yeah, you can get some pretty cool, funny photos there and yeah, it's just something to see. I just want to take a minute to talk about something that's really important our mental health. And for that, I want to thank today's paid partnership with BetterHelp for making this video possible. I used to think that therapy was only for those with clinical diagnoses, but I've come to realize that we can all benefit from a little extra support. Therapy isn't just about getting help when things are falling apart. It's about gaining perspective on our lives and learning strategies to deal with these challenges and ultimately becoming the best version of ourselves. This is where BetterHelp comes in. Their mission is simple, making therapy more accessible to everyone. You answer a few questions on your life and your goals, and BetterHelp will match you with a credentialed therapist. You can connect with your therapist through phone, video, or text. And the best part is if you don't feel a super strong connection, you can change to a new therapist at no extra cost. 
For me, therapy has been a game changer, and that is why I'm excited to support BetterHelp's mission. So, if you're struggling in any way, take that step, click the link in my video description, and also, you'll get 10% discount off your first month. So it's a risk-free way of trying out BetterHelp and seeing how it fits into your life. Thanks again to BetterHelp for partnering with us and helping change people's lives. Let's get back to the video. Next up, visit Overlap Stone. Now, I have absolutely no idea how this stone ended up there. It's the same with many stones in the islands of Thailand. You notice a lot of these huge boulders that are just stuck up on like small stones. And you're like, how on earth did that end up there? Was it aliens by any chance? But yeah, this is another one and it's a tourist attraction. You'll notice that there is sometimes a line of people waiting, but you still get the opportunity to get a good photo with this enormous boulder and it makes you feel really small when you're next to it. And also you get phenomenal views from up there. There is a small entry fee as well, but you know what? You do it for the gram. Next up, number four, Namueng Waterfall. Now, Koh Samui doesn't really have that many waterfalls and this waterfall is a nice waterfall. It's the main waterfall that you should really see when you are in Koh Samui. There are two options. There's Namueng 1, which is the more popular touristy one, which is easier to access, or there's Namueng 2, which requires you to hike up about a 25 minute hike. And the hike's pretty challenging, I'm not gonna lie. When you get to the top, the waterfall does feel more like a stream. It's not a huge waterfall like you imagine when you think of waterfalls. It's just like a small stream, but it has got some remarkable views. And there's also gonna be nobody there at Namueng Waterfall number two. Namueng Waterfall number one, we didn't visit on this trip, but I have visited before. It's very pretty as well, but there's gonna be lots more people. Next up, this has got to be my favorite experience in the whole of Koh Samui, the elephants. We chose to go to Samui Elephant Sanctuary, and the reason for that is this is the OG, this is the original elephant sanctuary in the whole of Koh Samui. The beautiful thing about Samui Elephant Sanctuary is all of the elephants there are rescue elephants. They've all come from a past of torture, of abuse, from people riding them, from the trainers chaining them up. And it was just amazing to see the work that some of the Elephant Sanctuary are doing to take care of them. And by using the tourism that come there and people that buy their tickets to see the elephants, how they're able to grow as a company and rescue more elephants. It's a phenomenal story. And we really had an amazing, amazing experience being able to get up so up close to the elephants, cuddle them, stroke them, feed them, give them bananas, just basically love them and highly recommend it. They also included hotel pickup and drop off back at your hotel. So really, really well organized and an absolute must when you visit Koh Samui. Next up, Lamai Viewpoint. Now, there are lots of viewpoints in Koh Samui offering different perspectives of the island, but I absolutely loved Lamai just because it had a bit more to it. As soon as you get to Lamai Viewpoint at the bottom as you buy your ticket for entry, you'll notice that there's a little fish bar where you can put your feet in and basically have all the dead skin eaten off by the fish. It makes your feet tickle and it's just a lot of fun. There's also a big Valentine stone, which apparently if you touch it, you'll find love and stay in love for life. But then there's also a cable car which will take you to the top of Love My Viewpoint so you don't have to walk to the top and that's a pretty fun experience as well. But once you're up there, there is actually a really great restaurant, cafe that offer great cocktails, some great food options and of course some amazing views over the whole of Lamai. But in addition to that, you don't just get a restaurant, there's also the opportunity to go zip lining. And guys, we did, and we had an amazing, amazing time. There's two zip lines and it was so, so much fun. So can highly suggest that as well. I'll also link that in the video description below for you guys to book it. So much fun, add Lamai viewpoint to your itinerary. Next, number seven, we've got the Secret Buddha Garden. Now, not a huge number of people will know about this because it's a little bit out of the way, but fortunately, we went again with Mr. Samui, who I will link the tour to in the video description below, who took us in their four by four safari almost, and we were able to get off-road and visit the Secret Buddha Garden. 
Now, once you get there, you'll notice this is a really unique place because the whole area in this little rainforest almost feels like a little fantasy world. It's meant to represent Thailand, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, before the period of, you know, modernization and when the main luxury was experiencing the Thai dancing. Now, back then, the only person that could really afford it was the king because the shows to put on were really expensive, the outfits that all of the statues are wearing were very expensive and also what was really unique was noticing all of the females didn't have anything covering their chest and that is because way back when before the Europeans came over to Thailand this is how women dressed they would have their breasts out it is also known as the Tarnim garden as well and that is because the gentleman that created the place he's now got the place named after him but it is a really lovely unique place to walk around we went there and it was empty there was no other people and it just felt great being within the rainforest within nature and seeing this enchanting little buddha garden <laughs> Next up, number eight, go to Beaufort Fisherman's Village. Now, uh, when you compare all the other markets in Thailand to Beaufort's Fisherman Village, the one thing that I would say is this is really catered towards tourists. You're not really gonna see any Thai people walking around buying local food. This place is tailored toward the tourists. There's many Westerners there. There's many different, you know, dessert places, pancakes, lots of different food options, lots of great food options, don't get me wrong, but also some really great souvenir places. And to be honest, if you didn't manage to go to Bangkok and go to Chatterjack Market or one of the other main markets in Thailand, this is a really great opportunity for you to collect some of those items, to pick up some of those elephant pants and all of the clothes that you can ever wish for. There's a lot happening. It's a very lively place. There's some great restaurants on the water, some massage parlors, some tattoo parlors if you want a tattoo. There's a steakhouse. There's just various different things catering towards the tourists. It really is the place to go on a Monday, Friday and Wednesday, I think you'll have to check online, but those three nights, the Beaufort Fisherman's Village is really the spot to be. Next on that list is visit a fire show at Coco Tams. Now, within the Beaufort Fisherman's Village, there is a restaurant, bar, really, really vibey, cool place called Coco Tams. And every evening they have two fire shows, one at 9.30 p.m. and another, I think, I think at 7 p.m. you'll have to check online but this place is pretty sick like genuinely the food looks great the vibe looks great the drinks are great they've got these really cool areas that you can sit down and many bean bags on the beach and the reason that people go there is because genuinely this is probably the best fire show I've ever seen in my entire life it is really well coordinated really well choreographed and just pretty remarkable. I don't know what it is about fire, but you know, watching this fire show makes you think like, wow, that is sick. So definitely head there one evening. You don't even have to buy a drink to just sit down and just watch the fire show, but definitely something to go check out. You need to see the fire show at Coco Tams. And last on that list, visit Ang Thong National Park. Now guys, this is definitely in no particular order because Ang Thong National Park was probably one of the most beautiful places I've been to. Now for this trip, we joined a company called 100 Degrees East and I will link the tour that we went on in the video description below. The reason why this was a fantastic tour is because we took a speedboat over there. There are many other excursions visiting Ang Thong which take you on these big boats which take like two hours to get out there and the waters can sometimes be a little choppy but all I know is I don't want to be out on a boat for four hours in a day to visit a national park. I'd rather just spend an hour on a speedboat and an hour back in a comfy, you know, well looked after clean speedboat, which is what it was. Now the tour involved us joining two other families and a couple, so it's quite a small group, about 12 others of us. And we went over to Ang Thong National Park, which is absolutely stunning. It started with a snorkeling trip in an area where there was no other people. It was beautiful to see some of the fish, some of the sea cucumbers, and just be in the water so far out 
on your own. It was well guided, the snorkeling equipment was fantastic, and then we boarded the boat. We then went into the national park and we made a stop off on this completely secluded beach where the staff organized a lunch for us. The lunch was delicious, loads of food, more than enough, but genuinely the best experience for me was just the fact that we were on our own very small beach. They laid out some food and we just basically got to enjoy it in peace and quiet. Now, unfortunately, at this point, the day that we went, the weather was really appalling. It was cloudy, it was rainy, and honestly, it was such a shame because I really felt like to get the true experience at Ang Thong, you need to go when it's sunny, when the sun's shining, when the water's azure and turquoise and blue. But still, we had an amazing experience, and I attribute this to the tour that we went on. It was incredibly well organized. The fact that we had snorkeling, we had a lovely uh, lunch organized for us. We got some great photos in front of the gorilla, King Kong, that was praying sort of thing. And then we had some kayaking to do, which was really lovely as well. And then made our way over to the mother island of Ang Thong, where we did a short hike to the top to see the Emerald Lagoon, which was absolutely stunning. Even though it was cloudy, it was rainy, and the weather was miserable, the Emerald Lagoon, the water was just so beautiful. It was green, and that is because it's a mix of the rainwater and also the seawater. All I can say about Ang Thong is it is somewhere that I really feel like I need to return because I experienced like a taste of it, and these guys put on an amazing tour but I just need to return when the weather is beautiful. Absolutely make sure you add Ang Thong to your list. And that is the list of the top 10 things that I really want to suggest to you guys to do when you come to Koh Samui. There is maybe one bonus, which, you know, you might want to do. It's a trip to Koh Mad Son, otherwise known as Pig Island. Now, this is a island and there's a region of it where there's a restaurant and there's like a load of pigs. And to be honest, it's really unique to see pigs on a beach, of course, and to see them just roaming around freely. But the problem is there's so many tourists now. There's so many people just there taking photos with the pigs. And to be honest, it's just a bit chaotic. Personally, I suggest if you are gonna visit it, spend 10 minutes there, look at the pigs, see the pigs, take a photo with the pigs, and then get off the island because it just seems extremely touristy. Fortunately though, we had a tour with Mr. Samui and it involved two other stop-offs, different island stop-offs in that region as well. And of course, it was a private long tail boat that we went out on, which was an amazing experience. I had a lot of fun. But again, I just think Pig Island didn't really make the top 10 list just because for me, it wasn't my favorite thing to do, but I wanted to make you guys aware of it just in case you wanted to visit. But there you guys have it. That is the end of this list of the top things that you must do in Koh Samui. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button so you get notified for the weekly uploads. Also, make sure that if you want to check out other videos from the Thailand series, you go to my channel or click on one of the links in the video description. I'm also going to stick a card up there with many other videos from the Thailand series. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one.